Hey. Oh. It is episode 38. Of <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> right? Analyze Billy Joel lyrics. 38. 38 of these. And if you look at the runtime, you're yeah. getting a lot of entertainment value if your only judgment is runtime. It's yes. Yeah. We'll give you that. If your entire judgment on whether or not that was you got value was runtime, we are delivering. If you're commuting from uh, Calabasas, yeah. you love us. Yeah. Calabasas to New York. Yeah, so or, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a lot to do. There's a lot to listen to, a lot to keep up on. A lot of uh, you know, because you want to keep up because our store is filled with canon. There's so much canon, <laughs> you know, of uh, the character of Alex and the your right. arc. Like for example, you have a different right. shirt today. Different shirt today. Different apartment. Halfway through. Yep. You if you're not caught up you're like how did that where'd that shirt come from you'd say right you have and to then go, you gotta go back sorry yeah. or or read one of the many you know fan yeah. theory sites one of the uh, novelizations yeah the alex and jim you you know fan theories who some of the fan theories think that we are both actually billy joel right and well we can't say we yeah. shouldn't say yeah, I, I, as long as they have fun writing it, it's it's a very thin theory. But it's not yeah. our place to destroy uh, fan theories. So last, I could week, live without the uh, slash fiction. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. Well, <laughs> I guess I should stop writing it. <laughs> <laughs> stop sending it to me, at least. At the very least, stop sending it to me. Written with newspaper, uh, magazine letters <laughs> cut out. <laughs> You don't have time for that. I know. I make the time because I care. <laughs> um, last week, I mentioned um, the, one of the Billy Joel fan sites and arguments and then that mariachi band that did um, Piano, Pan, Piano Man. This week, I, I found something else that I forgot how funny I find this. And it was fan art. Ooh. And uh, this guy showed a watercolor he had done of the cover to glass houses. Okay. And, um, and everybody was very complimentary. Great. Nobody was insulting only because I held my tongue. <laughs> <laughs> because, side note, wouldn't you say that's the album, as far as album covers, that's the most... Oh yeah, that's an iconic album cover. Sure, absolutely. That's the most like, like you a picture it in your head real easily. Yeah, it's evocative and it's it's not quite like a Sergeant Pepper's, but it's up there in that it feels like they really nailed that album as far yeah. as the cover. Absolutely. So for those of you who don't remember, why are you listening? But um, <laughs> that's the one where he's throwing a rock at a glass house, which you're often told is a bad idea, but he probably don't live there. So that's okay. Right. Um, and he's in the leather jacket and he has big old hair, pretty big hair. Um, and this guy had drawn that and <laughs> he must also like us think that Billy Joel might be a dwarf. <laughs> oh no, oh no. The legs were just not the right proportion. Oh no. The head's a little big. I feel like even on that album cover, they like stretched him out a little bit. Yeah. He looks lankier than he deserves probably. Yeah, but to me, this drawing was an attempt to hurt his feelings. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. And, and the hair was big. Well, the hair was just bigger than it is. It was a fascinating interpretation. 
<laughs> Probably the only thing that came off not insulted was the house. There's the oh, got, did a good job on the house. Yeah, the house didn't look like a weird house, but it should have. It should have been a like well, a a house from the Shire. I was going to say the exact same thing. Yes, <laughs> house from the Shire. Like, and instead of a rock, he's got that big old pipe. Just oh, yeah. <laughs> oh no. So well, I started... you have to link us to that uh, drawing. Hmm. I will absolutely provide a link because it's just funny. Uh, it's funny too what fans do because it's well intentioned, but I I guess well intentioned, but it doesn't seem but but. Yeah, but I don't think what you want to say, and I and I wouldn't, but mm -hmm. maybe you're not good at drawing. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, good for you taking a run at it. Yeah. Um, He's better do you at have any friends who are like artists? Um, I have a relative who uh, thinks she's a pretty good painter, um, which is not the case. But every birthday and Christmas, I'll get a real big painting uh, with a real like 40 pound frame on it. And, you know, wall space is limited anyway. Yeah. Um, and she'll be like, I painted this for you. And you, you know, you sort of feel like, oh, that's sweet. I don't think it's true. I think you just painted it and then went, uh, uh, how can I get this out of my house? Yeah. So it's, uh, it's his birthday. Um, so I have like five or six enormous paintings that are we're just leaning in a closet forever. Yeah. Uh, it's like I can't put this up in my house. No, it, you, you know. God bless you for trying, but don't give people paintings that you painted unless you're like have sold them for money and you're good at it and stuff. Even then, because it's weird how people can't gauge that they're bad. Yeah, it is weird. It is very weird. It's why I've always said that I'm happy if my family enjoys what I do, because that's nice. But I'm ecstatic when strangers do, because I know that that's a judgment that I can trust. Yeah, they don't have to like you. Yep, they're not invested in that sense. And you know it's funny too, because yeah, and but and the answer is yes. I know people who are just, you know, I I know a ton of comics who shouldn't be comics, of course. Right. Um, and I know, and for a little while, I had close friends' wives who were dabbling in comedy, uh, and one of them turned out to be pretty funny, and I was like really delighted that that turned out to be the case because it just so rarely is. And she's the one who quit. <laughs> <laughs> um, are these like wives of comic friends? No, but wives of creative friends. Gotcha, okay. Yeah. Yep. Um, yeah, the other thing is though, even if they're good at art, like even if let's say I was a good painter and I sent you a painting that you recognized as good right you still might not want to put it up and it's a tough it's a it's a tricky gift to pull off yeah because even if it is good usually art is something you pick out yeah i've only i've given i've been given one piece of art that i like and is prominently displayed and it's because the person saw the art and said jim bruce is gonna love this and it's the only reason and they weren't shopping for me they encountered it and went oh damn this is jim bruce's piece of art right and they nailed it yeah if you, you really got to know your target yeah it's not even a dude i'm that close to but and they got you the thing that's behind you right now right that's what they got you yeah <laughs> He got right. me a sculpture of, you know what? Would you like to see it? Yes. So entertain, every, you'll, I, we, you, I've done this before. Did you, you Check order, this out. While you're doing that, we're going to order pizza. 
oh, everybody listen to Alex order pizza. I'll be right back. It's a good thing we're not bad at podcasts. Yeah. Hey, Sue. Look at uh, the menu for Speedy Romeo and tell me which pizza you want. And I'll order it. Speedy Romeo is a boutique. Is boutique a fair word? It's a very good pizza place near the new apartment. And we're going to order something from them. I liked the St. Louis, which I had. It's very, uh, what would you say, haute cuisine style pizza? This is entertainment, if ever there was any. All right. This is the sculpture. Yeah, let's see if I can make my camera yeah. do the right thing. Yeah, I think you have to put it right in front of your torso or something. Yeah. Oh, there we yeah. go. Oh, there it is. So it is a primate <laughs> contemplating the skull of a homo sapien. Fantastic. Sitting on a stack of books. One of them is The Origin of Man by Darwin. Right. And I immediately was like, it felt very evocative of Shakespeare, Hamlet in yep. particular. And uh, I, and it's pretty hefty. It's like a real yeah. thing. That's it, fantastic. It's got some weight to it. And it's got a, a little Planet movie. of the Apes vibe. Yeah. The whole thing feels like a really, whoever did this was fairly inspired to do it. It doesn't feel like garbage art to me. It was like nice in. And it's the only no, that's a nice piece. And it's the only sculpture I own because yeah. if you have a sculpture that's not a particular thing but is like meant to evoke something, it will not work on me. Gotcha. <laughs> All right. Uh, I, I'm not that sophisticated. Uh, a sculpture is going to have to look like a thing. Yeah, I'm with you. It's if it's going to take up room in the house, I don't want to have to fucking explain it to everybody who comes by. Yeah. I don't want to go, what do you think it looks like? It should just look like a thing. And uh, this okay. guy looks like a thing. That, and the proportions are real good. So there's uh, that piece of art I got. Fantastic. And that's the one and only time somebody's done that where I thought, well, you really did figure it out. You really got me. And then this other guy one time bought me a final copy of the button down mind of um, Bob Newhart. Oh, the best. Yep. Is that the phone call to Lincoln? Yeah, that's, that's the album that made him a uh, sensation. That was the album that surprised everybody by charting. Uh, when comedy albums don't really do that right that and you know and he was a household name within like it feels like minutes of that coming out but that's what happened <laughs> those days are gone yeah i think so i think so hold on i'm trying to order this pizza it's not going well yeah <laughs> i have to reset my password now oh that's fun you guys this is entertainment <laughs> yeah Picture yourself in our shoes ordering pizza and then it becomes interactive. You know, hey, in the comments, ma mention if you've ever ordered pizza. Please, by all means. Is pizza ever mentioned in any Billy Joel songs? I made it relevant. Oh, I wonder if it is. Um, I can't think of any. Yeah. Isn't that weird? I'm sure Mama Leone's makes pizza. Probably true. You know, and uh, bottle red, bottle white, also some za could be. Yeah, I mean, you can't just sit there and drink wine. Yeah. Although they need the table. Yeah, although I can guarantee you he's done that. Oh, for sure. I bet he's closed down restaurants just to drink wine. Only drinking wine. And they're like, 
I was the only other big one. Trust me, we'll make our money. Don't worry. <laughs> Get the keys. <laughs> oh, bottle of red, bottle of white. Oh, here's some pizza. Yeah. Oh, you guys. It's really going poorly. Hold so, on. Well, I mistyped my email address. Nice. <laughs> So while Alex is doing this, why don't I remind you what song Alex picked last week or last episode, I should say. We missed another week and that's okay. The song he picked Fine. is Where's the Orchestra? And um, it's a very pretty song. This it, is a fantastic uh, example, I think, of the theme of this song. Because I think the theme of this song is uh, being disappointed in adulthood. <laughs> <laughs> and I think I'm doing a good job of being disappointing. <laughs> you guys, I have to add a payment method. Oh, and at, hey, at home, <laughs> how would you, how would you hope that Alex would <laughs> This is so bad. <laughs> Like, um, think about all the ways Alex could pay. He could give the guy a check. What a terrible way to try to pay. I feel like I should give everybody a check who's listening to this. <laughs> so email me at jimbrus at yahoo.com. I will send you, well, nothing, really. Yeah. But in, in the meantime, you get to contemplate the clue behind me and see if you end up guessing before Alex does. Um, although we're not doing that part of the show yet, but that gives you something to do while Alex is ordering pizza. We're not doing much of anything yet. No. You guys, it's on the way. It is fantastic. You guys do eat a lot of pizza, by the way. It's true. It's our emergency. I eat and, you, know, you would think uh, anytime you're like, oh, we don't know what to have. Well, we'll get pizza. It's New York. Who could fuck it up? We'll get pizza from anywhere. And then we did that a week ago. It was the worst pizza I've ever had in my life. <laughs> I don't know how they managed to make horrible, soggy, flavorless pizza <laughs> in Brooklyn. But they did it. And how they're allowed to be open at that point. They're allowed to still be open. I feel like I should walk by that place every day. Yeah. And, and like, boo. Yeah, you shouldn't be able to get away with that. In, in Los Angeles, I accept that yeah. I can get a bad pizza and that's fine. Right. I will not accept subpar sushi. Oh, uh, see? No. And not because we're a port, there's a, not because there's this port nearby and we get the freshest fish, but that kind of fare we're known for. Yes. Like we're known for a hamburger that's too expensive, but yeah. it has something on it that you're like, Oh, that was kind of worth it. You say yeah. a lot of food here. <laughs> right, right. They I'm glad we waited in that drive through for an hour. Yeah, that was sort of worth it. Um, how much was the burger? It was $30. Really? Yeah. Well, was. we won't do it every day, but yeah. I'm glad we had that experience. And then you you'll find, say, yeah, well, they make their own French fries. How does that explain $30? It doesn't. <laughs> They make their own French fries. That doesn't mean thirty dollars, but yeah. They use uh, that Himalayan pink salt. <laughs> right. Oh, that's why. Some asinine thing. Oh, portobello mushrooms. It's a mushroom. Those are cheap. Give yeah. me a real reason. Oh, and if the real reason is just they want my thirty dollars, fine. Yeah, mushrooms grow because you uh, didn't take care of something. Yeah. It's easy. It's like, oh, the shed got wet. <laughs> Get mushrooms. Oh, we got mushrooms, and now we can open a restaurant. Great. Mushrooms are weird, too, how many of them are poisonous and how somebody manages to know they're not. It's, uh, I'd stay away from all of them. Yeah. Even on the pizza? Nice. Yeah. Yeah, even on pizza. Have you, ever, have you ever tried that? It doesn't taste like anything. Yeah. Don't have come you, to my pizza. Have you ever done the fun mushrooms? Have you ever done that? Oh, sure. Yeah. Many of the time, but then I'm like trusting someone else to eat some first <laughs> from that bag. 
And then they're like, hey, we had some of these last night and we're alive. I'm like, all right, then I will. <laughs> I've only ever done it once and I didn't understand the amount you were supposed to take. So oh they, I was given a bag and I was like, oh, I guess I eat a bag. Oh, no. <laughs> and, you know, like a week later, I was like, oh, OK, 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 OK. The colors stopped vibrating. Woo! Was it melting? Did you learn anything about yourself? Did you go to a place? Yes. Or were you just terrified? Um, were you alone? No, I was not alone. Oh, good. I was with a lady, and uh, it was the the only part of it that remains awesome. All the things I thought I learned, whatever. But the only part that remains awesome and then i looked up later why this happens and it was interesting to me is i thought to myself i would very much like to sit on a bench oh yeah and a bench appeared magically <laughs> and, and it amazed me yeah it was like i think i just created a bench <laughs> and i come to understand later that one of the effects is that it it separates for a time more or less the thought process of your two halves of your brain. Yeah. So that one of your parts of your brain can see the bench and the <laughs> other part cannot know there's a bench there, but can kind of have a hazy idea of the bench. Right. So you know. why am I thinking bench thoughts? Yeah. And I oh. love the bench and that part remains cool to me. I think, oh, that's <laughs> yeah. So, and, but that's a dumb reason to do mushrooms to go. I want more bench magic. Yeah, yeah. That's pretty low rent uh, mushroom magic. Yeah, yeah. And I, but, you can make a person show up. That's great. Yeah. Yes. But that's when you give them mushrooms. So that <laughs> works. So we, uh, Alex picked Where's the Orchestra and I did. A very pretty song. Very pretty song. It's uh, also a very good example of, you know, we always say he's musical theater for straight people. Yeah. Um, and this is very intentionally sounds like something that would be in the middle of a musical. Yeah. What era musical would you find this in? I feel like it's almost like mid Sondheim. It's, yeah, maybe Sondheim or maybe even um like a movie music like an mgm yes musical yeah absolutely like a song that was cut from singing in the rain yeah it's definitely not a modern it was too long <laughs> it's definitely not a modern movie musical no but um of an era yeah it's definitely a thing of an era um i enjoyed it listened to it a couple times uh, would be happy to listen to it again. So it's not a song I dislike at all. It's very nice. Um, I also like that it's a. It's very clearly from the point of view of a crotchety person at a show. <laughs> it immediately is complaining. Yeah. Um, and it's their fault because you can know when before you get there whether it's a musical or a play. Yeah. And this person just didn't do the research. And it's like, where's the orchestra? Like, we told you it's no exit. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny because, and the, that's so great because I've actually, I've been in that situation with someone who was, didn't understand, like, did you? Oh, I went, I went. My mother very rarely goes to the movies, but one Christmas I was home. And she was like, I feel like going to the movies. Let's go see um, Mamma Mia. She wanted to go see Mamma Mia. She's a big fan of ABBA songs. So we're like, all right, we'll go see it. You know, like Christmas Eve in Sierra Vista, Arizona. It's us and maybe one other pairing yeah. in the theater. And it starts and immediately into the first song, she is furious that it's not ABBA singing the songs. It's the people in the movie 
Mm -hmm. Like some of them are okay singers, a lot of them are fine or not great. <laughs> She's furious. She's like, why are these idiots singing their songs? Mm -hmm. said, well, no, they took the songs and made she just like the rest of the, I think she fell asleep. She just checked out immediately. That's great. So mad. She just wanted to listen to the album. Yeah, which you could do at home. You could do that at home. She did it in her car every day for years. So she wanted, she thought, oh, I'm going to love this movie soundtrack. Yeah, so I'll go to the movie. Oh, I wonder what it would be like to hear this song with stuff happening in front of the song. Yeah, like a karaoke video is what yeah. she wanted. Wow, that's fantastic. <laughs> It was the best. I didn't enjoy it at the time. <laughs> but years later, I was like, oh, this is a story that I have now. It's great. I remember going to see Blood Simple. Do you remember that movie? Oh, yeah. And um, my understanding was it was a dark comedy. Ah. And, but at the time, my understanding of how dark a comedy could be was limited. <laughs> so it was jarring for me but i still accepted that this was the case and then whoever i was with was like uh this is not a comedy nothing about this is a comedy and i was like well it is <laughs> but you're also kind of not wrong since that's how you're watching it <laughs> right but that was interesting to me yeah and some of those things, if I go back and I've, I've watched Blood Simple years later and I was like, oh no, this is awfully funny. Because, you know, life happens. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This life happens. You have to get used to a dark comedy. The first foray into dark comedy always goes kind of poorly. Yeah. I think, because you are thinking, oh, comedy. And like, no, you forgot the dark. Yeah. Because it's not, yeah, you won't laugh. Yeah, and it's there's a reason that word's first. <laughs> yeah. Because that's the thing it is the most of. It is mostly that. Yeah. So you pick, <laughs> where's the orchestra? Where's the orchestra? And uh, it's a pretty song. And yeah, musical theater is a great way to describe it. Um, and it's a good example of Billy Joel's a very good musician. Lovely melody. Yeah. Very pretty singer. This is, it's on uh, Nylon Curtain, right? It's that's right. The yeah. last song. Kind of a thesis statement. Yeah. Um, it's, you know, that was, I guess, the disillusionment album. Yeah. <laughs> where he uh, couldn't handle, is it pressure? Pressure, yeah. Yeah. Um, Downtown, a big bummer. Yeah. A lot he, of uh, Scandinavian he, skies. He didn't like the Scandinavian skies. Yeah, he didn't like the people thought he was a big shot. <laughs> <laughs> um it's also i think it's well maybe we'll get into the lyrics instead and then i'll tell you my thing that i think yeah i'll do the first one by the way this also could be viewed through a certain lens as a comedy song because yeah. it's so complainy and you remember that movie uh sergeant pepper's lonely hearts club band that had a bunch sure. of 70s people in it Oh, yeah. And it was a weird, crazy movie. And, uh, you know, George Burns was in it. <laughs> if you did a Billy Joel musical, but you didn't just use the hits, having an old man doing the song would be great. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I could see like a George Burns. I don't know. Who's our George Burns now? It takes somebody crotchety too, somebody real complaining, like Lewis Black, if you were like going to book him and say, you can talk, sing this. <laughs> yeah. And that actually, you know what? Okay. That we're really doing that. Um, so let's start writing letters to people because we got to <laughs> get the rights and we got to make sure it's, we don't do it if we can't get Lewis Black. <laughs> <laughs> I bet we can get him. Yeah. <laughs> right, he'd probably find what's wrong with you people okay i'll do it as long as in my next special i can yell about you guys all right deal right uh where's the other 
where's the orchestra? Wasn't this supposed to be a musical? Here I am in the balcony. How the hell could I have missed the overture? It could also be a Muppet special, and this is the old man. <laughs> oh my God. It'd be a great Muppet song. Yeah, it's Statler and Wardoff. Wardoff? War, 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 Waldorf? Waldorf, yeah. It feels like, um, what was his name? Scooter? Yes. Could sing this. Yeah, Scooter. What wasn't Scooter always the? He was the Harry stage manager. I yeah, think. way melodramatic songs of loneliness when he did sing, right? <laughs> yeah, that sounds right. Yeah, where you were supposed to feel bummed out about him. <laughs> <laughs> so it. the nylon curtain, as we talked about before, refers to the suburbs. Yeah. Um, which is where Billy Joel was from. He had a very idyllic suburban youth. And I think this is about what happens to a lot of people who come from that world. There was a solid middle class post-World War II. Uh, money was flowing into the suburbs. Everyone was on the GI Bill. Yeah. So, the, you know, you could work, you could manage a restaurant and buy a house with the money you made. Yeah. And then uh, I think a lot of, that generation left the suburbs and found out that life was harder than that and dirtier and more chaotic yeah and they're bummed out and disappointed by the world and the life they have to put together without all that cushion yeah and so i think this is like the thesis of the album it's like hey i thought it, life was going to be good all the time yeah Where's the orchestra? Yeah. This stinks. <laughs> and it's yeah. hard and I don't like it. Yeah, agreed. It's a very- That's my little theory. That's a good theory. That's very economical lyrics. Uh, that's for sure. And, and as I look at them, yeah. I'm like, truly economical because he says enough things that it doesn't feel like a waste of time. Right. It doesn't seem to say anything twice which is wonderful, actually. I, I appreciate that. Yeah. The song, I understand. It stays inside the metaphor. Yep. Yeah, and actually, you could even argue as we get into the lyrics, it's one of his, from that standpoint, one of the better written bits of lyrics. Amen. Yeah. Yes, I agree. And it does have that little bridge, but again, works nicely. Yeah. I, I, I love, Sorry, I was going to forge ahead. Oh, yeah, go ahead. I like the scenery, even though I have absolutely no idea at all what is being said, despite the dialogue. There's the leading man. That's great. That's great. So that's just a mean critique because he's not saying, oh, it's I can't hear the dialogue. He's saying it's bad. <laughs> I have no idea what's, I don't even know if it's bad. I don't know what's going on. I don't know what the point of this is. Despite the dialogue, I'm still, is his character married to that character? I don't know. I don't know <laughs> what their relationship's supposed to right. be. Is he the good guy? I thought he was the bad guy. It sounds like about everybody who ever had to see a play I wrote when I was trying to write. <laughs> it sounds to me like watching a movie with my mother. <laughs> or she's like, that, who's that guy? I'm like, that's the same guy from before, but now it's a different day. So he has a sweater on, <laughs> but it's the same guy. You know how in real life people change clothes? Yeah, yeah. it's like they're, mi they're mimicking that. <laughs> It's uh, art reflecting <laughs> reality. Oh, or maybe I, you just lose track of people when they change clothes. Yeah, I like picturing that, the director going, now in this scene, you're wearing a different sweater because people do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, and they really do. Yeah, yeah. Now, now I have an end to the character. Cinema uh, verite. Now I think I've cracked open who this person is. <laughs> This next set of lyrics, just to go back real quick, how the hell could I have missed the or overture? I like how the hell. Yeah. This guy's obviously a crank. 
he's very upset about this. Yeah, he is for sure going to complain about the cost of a Coke at intermission. For sure. That's, he's going to be mad that it's five bucks. and He's already mad they took the Coke he tried to bring with him. Yeah. <laughs> and it will do you no good to explain, well, there's lights. They have to pay for this. They have to pay for that. So they have to keep the lights on somehow. Not my problem. All right, but I invite... And what, what does the ticket pay for? I don't... It helps pay for it. Ugh. Come on. Ugh, just watch Netflix. <laughs> uh, the movie star who never faced an audience. I've seen shows right. like that. Yep. And, and, and that maybe is a legitimate gripe, but you knew who he was. <laughs> yeah. You saw you went and you decided to see Death of a Salesman with Tony Danza. That's your <laughs> fault. <laughs> You, you were like, maybe he'll be great. You knew he wasn't going to be great. You saw Taxi. Yeah, you knew it was just going to be the same guy. I can't do a Tony Danza. <laughs> Angela, that almost. Angela. Yeah, you nailed it. Yeah, that's it. Um, the movie <laughs> star never faced an audience. Although I'll tell you what, now that I think about it, if, if that was coming through my town, I'd pay to go see it. You might check that out, yeah. I would have to. Talk joke. about uh, your dark comedy. <laughs> Absolutely. Where's the <laughs> orchestra? After all, this is a my big night on the town. Oh, great. Great. I got out to do something, so you better make it fun for me, because I don't <laughs> yeah. try very often. <laughs> my introduction to the theater crowd. So he had some, he had highfalutin ideas in his mind about who these people are and what he should be given. This is gonna be great. Yeah. And you know what? He had that feeling that somehow this experience should also make him feel different like people feel about vacations. Right. <laughs> yes, and it never works. Mm -mm. You come home, you're still you. Yeah. And you're getting, yeah. Too bad. And, and I, I bet too, you're like, he's hoping for enough stuff in it. I'll have lots of stuff to talk about. No. <laughs> no, oh. just that it was neat seeing the guy from Taxi. That was neat. That was neat. And you're probably the one nice thing he's going to say something nice about the program. That's what he's going to do. <laughs> they really, it's very glossy. Yeah. Um, this I, I think even check out that dentist. <laughs> so that's where you buy wigs. <laughs> um, here's the thesis sentence for the song. I assumed that the show would have a song. So I was wrong. At least I understand all the innuendo and the irony. Oh, so he gets some of the show. I, I understand the dirty stuff <laughs> and the, the bitter stuff. Yeah. But uh, the fact that uh, this is the only place where he takes some blame. I assume, I'm, I assumed yeah. that the show would happen. It's on, that's on me. But is he really taking blame? Because that's, that's funny. Because yeah. it depends on how he's, you know, if you imagine it as a conversation, he could be taking, or it could be, I just assumed there'd be a song because of course there's a song. Right. Why is there not a song? I think that's, yeah, that's adulthood. Yeah. Like, I thought this would be great. Why do I have to do so much stuff? <laughs> Why do I keep having to go places and fill things out? Yeah. I thought Why I would just I... eat candy and watch TV. Why that was I... my dream of it when I was eight. <laughs> Paul Goebel has two daughters, and when they were little, I used to eat cookies and go, you guys can have cookies if somebody says you can. I could just eat cookies. <laughs> I'm an adult. I just eat these cookies. You know what? I'm just going to have a bunch of cookies. And, <laughs> and it would make them laugh, and they still quote that to me. Now that they're oh, adults, right. they'll sometimes they have said to me, we're going to have cookies. <laughs> yeah, you are. 
great. They were, they were fun kids to make fun of because uh, they understood that it was in jest. Fantastic. Yeah. So they didn't get that gene from their father. No, they grew up to be delightful human beings. So yeah, there's a lot of stuff that's good. What? <laughs> Oh, great. Oh, they're great. He actually, I would say, one of the things he got right is he did a pretty decent job with them. Nobody's perfect, but he did pretty good. Great. Yeah. I assume that the show would have a show on. Man, the great thing is he doesn't repeat. We just get to go one and not go, okay, well, you say the repeat thing again. Yeah, no. Just like a, a musical. It's all, all yeah. fresh thoughts. And I appreciate the roles the actors played, the point the author made, and after the closing lines. Now this is just betrays the fact that he's been bitching for nothing the whole time. <laughs> yeah. Told you, I don't have no idea at all what's being said. <laughs> and right. now he's conceding. All right, I get it. Uh, yeah. No, I'm not, I'm not stupid. I mean, I appreciate yeah. The roles the actors played. Yeah. Yeah, no, I get it now. Yeah. I was mad for a while, but now I'm tired. Yeah. He's happy. <laughs> he's, yeah, that's true. He's probably. Oh boy, happy. if that ain't adulthood, I don't know what is. Uh, this lyric is, is sung when he's singing this song, this lyric, it's at the moment afterwards when you stopped off for pie. <laughs> right. A little piece of pie and going. Look, I know the, the actors were great. You know what? It's hard to be an actor. I get it. <laughs> and now he's got pie in front of him. So he's like, okay, I'll complain a little less. Yeah, pie, pie is a little closer to what I had in mind for adulthood. <laughs> yep. And it'd be more pie. And it's still not quite right. Pie yeah. is the dessert as an adult you go. And I'd love to eat a whole cake. Yeah, let's have a piece of pie and some coffee and go home. Yeah, yeah. Because we got stuff, we got stuff to fill out. Yep. And yep. yep. Gotta get up early and fill stuff out tomorrow. I've got things to leave to people. I'm getting that old, so <laughs> yeah, that by the way always is my favorite part of going to the theater is pie, is the talking about it afterwards. Even if I love the thing, I still like the thing after more. Oh, yeah. Always. Even if I love the thing so much. A little denouement. Yep. I went yeah. and saw um, Steve Martin's play um, that he did with. Um, oh, the Le Pen. Yeah. And the New Bohemians lady, um, Edith Brickell. Edith Brickell and him wrote a play. And it's good-ish. It's pretty good. It's not great. It really isn't great. It's good. Yeah. And I think I think it could be amazing if he was a little less famous <laughs> and they were forced to workshop it more before anyone would put it up. Yeah. It kind of got in the side door. Yeah. And he even acknowledged as much. He said, the, if you want to be a playwright, one of his jokes was if you want to be a playwright, what's the most important part is to already be famous. <laughs> right. Yeah. You're wrong. But I didn't regret going. The, I mean, honest, the actors were good. You know what it felt like? It felt like a series of scenes stitched together. Yeah. Not a story. Yes. That is uh, usually uh, the criticism. When a play falls apart, that's what it feels like. Yeah. Like, oh, that's just a bunch of stuff that happened. It wasn't yeah. a story that got somewhere. Yeah. And, and after the curtain calls, the curtain falls on empty chairs. Where's the orchestra? <laughs> I like the little uh, the little rhyme. Yeah. After the curtain calls, the curtain falls. Yeah. On empty chairs. I don't know if the, is the, you know, is it, does it mean death? <laughs> uh, maybe. Well, it maybe does, although it probably literally means, well, 
show's over, the, the curtains went yeah, down, yeah. and he's still complaining. Still like the chairs, they have chairs. So then sometimes there's an orchestra. And then you have to say to him, if you're really fed up, you go, do you think they're coming out now? We just watched the thing, the thing's done. Yeah, it was what, two hours. What kind of show would that be? You think they were holding out the whole time? <laughs> yeah. You know, you keep this up, we're not going for pie. Oh, man. That's what that guy says. <laughs> <laughs> Billy Joel's friend. Billy who, Joel's friend. Who who's took gonna, him to a play. And he's only in town for a little while because he does, uh, call, he does stand up on the West Coast. Uh, right, of course. Town for a while. It's doing pretty well. He bought the damn tickets. Yeah, Broadway's right? not cheap. It's like, my friend is in this. Stop yeah. complaining. And it's Broadway. And I know mo uh, most of Broadway is musicals, probably, but it's not all. There are also not plays. All. There are also plays. And you can tell because that's where there's no line. <laughs> <laughs> that's why we're, these like... we're only $40. <laughs> That's probably actually true, huh? That's pretty true. Yeah. It's, it's, they're less lit up and uh, fewer people milling. Yeah, and out of town. And they're kind of like farther away from the center of Broadway. Yeah. Yeah, they're like the casinos that aren't on the strip. Yeah, exactly. You're like, oh, we can, uh, there's a place to sit. Oh, yep. great. And Plenty honestly, of room. It's just a different con, but yep. it's the same thing. The only <laughs> thing is, at least on Broadway, the con is, you know exactly what the con is. The yeah. con is and that this is meaningful. The con is when you try to buy a drink at intermission. And uh, how much was it double scotch? $55? $65. Wow. For Did a you double. Buy it? Yeah, because you're there. Yeah. You what are you gonna do? And you're like, well, the tickets were already four hundred dollars or something. And you're yeah. like, let's just live like we're gonna die tomorrow and then afterwards pie. Yeah. And man, we're finding the diner where pie is three dollars. <laughs> man, is that a long drive after a Broadway show? Jiminy Christmas. Wow. Deep into New Jersey. <laughs> Wow. Say that yeah. again in case people missed it. How much was that drink? So it's double bourbon at intermission was $65. Wow. That much bourbon. And I think wine is like 35 or 40. The other con is, and I and uh I remember seeing behind the curtain of this aspect, is that you get a glass of wine, a cabernet and they give you the glass. And a lot of times you don't see the bottle anywhere because yeah. they don't want you to know what garbage you just <laughs> got. Yes. If you're in California, there is a 85% chance you got the $2 wine from Trader Joe's that you just oh, got. For sure. Yep. Damn, man, that, that is a fucking con job i at that point i joined the other guy where's the orchestra and the wine that <laughs> won't hurt me yeah and that part i have a right to expect no you don't sir we're trying to stay in business shut up <laughs> <laughs> wow that was a good little play yeah oh you're welcome yeah, <laughs> yeah. and for ours i'm working on it that one will have an or orchestra because that's a lead into my big first number <laughs> great so you will have an orchestra yeah yeah i absolutely will have okay then i will bring my friend billy <laughs> and he will bring his own wine you'll bring your friend billy and you will write your own song called there's the orchestra <laughs> it'll be a lot shorter even yeah. than this. and it's much less complaining it's you expected a song here's a song it's like GPS. That actor's not from TV. He knows what he's doing. <laughs> and after the curtain calls, the curtain falls on people. Who are still there because they enjoy With the instruments. Show. They should leave. 
And then very, <laughs> as I said, there's the orchestra. There's the orchestra. We did it. We did it, yep. you guys. Yep. Uh, now listen, I, I got this little image behind me. Oh, that is a defibrillator. It sure is. Um, that would give you a big shock. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, baby. You had, you had to be. You a had a heart attack from the spoon up your nose. Yep, uh, all all works. <laughs> so the thing you you do that and then you yell clear. Yeah. No, nothing to do with that. No. Um, I will say that uh, this is probably you probably caused this and i would advise you oh you giving me a heart attack hack, 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 hack? that's right working too hard gave you a heart attack hack, 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 hack. yeah you're moving out i decided to do what i think is an easy one because we've had fun with the like i don't know what's going on <laughs> uh, i appreciate last, it yeah i think last one was reasonably easy except that i didn't account for alcohol <laughs> <laughs> yeah clearly neither did i <laughs> which is fantastic um no, before you I'm fire really drunk on uh bug spray because the golf course is very buggy yeah so i'm coated in sticky poison that's fantastic probably fine yeah i can't i there's nothing are there there's nothing no bad side effects to bug poison right i've never heard of any yeah i can't think of anybody who's been harmed Okay, we can think of one. Is it yeah. um, so let me tell you the uh, song, or do you do the trivia before you, I tell you the song? I normally do, but I didn't. I don't have anything unless you wanted to. Here's a. I'll do a dumb one. Okay. Hey, there's only one Billy Joel song that mentions Lebanon. Is it uh, Big Shot? <laughs> it's not Big Shot. Is, is it called Lebanon? It's not called Lebanon. Okay. Well, I don't know which one it is. No, it's the way it's the one that has everything in it that you don't hear anywhere else. Oh, is, is it um we didn't start the fire? Yes, we didn't start the fire. Oh, okay. <laughs> I could have done that with like 50 things. Yeah, that's true. That could be <laughs> your big shot for your part of the show, which is just like... yeah, yeah. I'll just do that'll be the trivia question every week. <laughs> The only song that mentions uh, Beatlemania. <laughs> uh, and then I'll probably do the same thing every week. Legitimately struggle because I'm bad at trivia. Uh, fantastic. Whenever I win at trivia, I feel ashamed of everyone else. And I do win sometimes. But whenever I win a, a thing that involved trivia, I think, wow. I know the brain I'm working with. You guys. You Get guys. Get together, people. You guys fucked up guys <laughs> bar full of idiots <laughs> if i'm the smartest one here yeah i used to have a joke where i would say that as bar trivia is where you try to figure out who the smartest person in the room is and they're the one who wins a beer hat <laughs> yeah <laughs> the other aspect of the joke which i still think is great i would say i want to start my own trivia night at a bar and it's exclusively trivia about Nazis. It's a <laughs> Nazi trivia night for two reasons. One, because at the end of the night, Craig has a bar, uh, has a beer hat, and everybody else is like, why does Craig know so much about Nazis? <laughs> That's a good joke. Right? That's a good joke. And I had, and it always, I always work to have the little act out where I'm like whispering. Yeah, yeah, the, the, the act of the lean. <laughs> yeah. Uh, those are the only kinds of act outs i don't have any extreme act outs but but like like we do on this show i like those kinds of oh, act yeah, outs for, yeah doing that nonsense i like it because <laughs> it communicates a thing but yeah, yeah. I don't have this to is wait. the secret now yeah i don't I remember, have to lower my voice i remember one time i did a bit and in the bit i talked about walking over to something and i walked over to something to show walking over to something and I was so mad at myself that the next <laughs> seven minutes was me making fun of that. And it, and it was glorious because everybody's like, yeah, that was pretty stupid. And I ended up doing very little of my material because I was like, yeah, hey, you see how I nailed walking? 
Yeah, the whole room was on the same team against you. Yep. And once right. I was against me, they were on my side. <laughs> so <laughs> that was pretty great. That's the fucking I, math. There are certain songs I think we both hesitate to pick because I think sometimes we don't pick them because they're they're the obvious song and I think we're both polite and we're like, <laughs> oh, I wanna let Alex pick that or I wanna let Jim pick that. And then we both work to like, where's the orchestra? That's not a- Yeah, that's no, not that's a, a, a full hit. B side. Yeah, um, but I went ahead and I'm gonna go ahead and pick uh, a banger and an A side. And we've talked about it a little before, but we've never, it's never been the episode's theme. She's always a woman. Ah, great. Lovely song. Lovely song. And uh, with some thorns in it. Yeah. And great thorns. Yeah. Right. I think you can question his emotional maturity or whatever, but you can't question that it's well written. It's a damn good song. Absolutely. Great. And All isn't right. it, haven't we settled that it's one of the songs that you bring up if somebody wants a typical, something representative of Billy Joel? Yes. She's yeah. Like, like, what does Billy Joel sound like? Oh, that song. That's what he sounds like. Most of the time, it's lately. Yeah, that's the vibe. And here's what I think, by the way, why it's true. One of the reasons it's true is because it sounds like Billy Joel. Also, just about nobody else does that that really is him that there's, really is him there's not yeah. another song you can go you know this is a little bit like you know ed sheeran's she's always a woman <laughs> no it is billy damn joel everybody yeah. it is a love song with a bunch of complaints in it yep by <laughs> apparently a cartoon dwarf according to the artist on facebook uh well, <laughs> I now I kind of like I hope that guy draws more pictures and it's more iconic photos and it's just weirdly shaped guy with saxophone. <laughs> <laughs> he just dwarfs him every time. There's a no regular size motorcycle <laughs> guy trying to get on motorcycle. <laughs> uh, great Ch child sized Billy Joel trying to get on adult. Hog, <laughs> adult, adult hog. Um, yeah, yeah. That's, that's our other podcast. Adult hog, yeah, and it's where we try to put to bed the rumors that we don't have adult-sized hogs. <laughs> they they hurt our feelings. With no evidence. Yeah. Other it's than our what, word. Please, no, we're not going to show you. No, that's gross. Yeah. We'll show you many pictures of, of that on the internet. Yeah. <laughs> well, listen, my friend Alex has a pizza coming. It's and true. <laughs> so we're going to shut down so him and Sue can eat. Uh, will the cat? Ooh. So the, it's almost there, isn't it? Almost here. Uh, will the Good cat? Odd. Will the cat have any pie? Does the cat get pizza? Cat will not have pizza. The cat will have chicken sometimes. Oh yeah. But nothing spicy for the cat. Will the cat only eat freshly cooked chicken? If you have leftover, it won't eat it? Um, no, she will eat leftover. She's a good cat. She's a good cat. She's all right. Yeah. My, I have a cat who will eat chicken that I've cooked. And if we have leftovers, I'll eat the leftovers. Cat won't wow. eat the leftovers. God damn. Cat, cat takes after my wife, who will not eat leftovers. Oh, yeah. I'm kind of that way, too. I have so many meals that are- I'll good. save them though. <laughs> I don't throw it away. I'm like, oh, I'll put it in the fridge and then in two weeks, I'll throw it away. In two weeks. We have, we have a passive aggressive standoff in our refrigerator right now over a piece of food that should <laughs> have been thrown away, not an exaggeration, four months ago. Oh no. I'm not doing it. <laughs> Because somebody thought pre-made sweet potato pie Ooh. to go with a dinner. And hey, I know this isn't this show, but a little hint, a little tip, tip for you guys. 
that stuff you buy when you're sure that's what you're having tonight. Yeah. That's when to buy that. Not when you think I might enjoy this. At some point. Because you have to cook other things with it. Ah, uh, gotcha. You can buy chicken and you, you're like, oh, I'll have chicken in the next couple of days. You will. Yeah, very good chance. Sweet potato pie. Real specific. You're going to have to, you know, oh, we, we didn't buy turkey. Maybe if we buy turkey, I'll, I will eat it later. Week later. It keeps its sweet potatoes. Three weeks later, it's probably still good. I don't think so. <laughs> sure it's fine. A couple months later. Did we throw that away? No, I didn't. Oh, I didn't throw it away. That's a good question. Anyway, that's a story. <laughs> story to end on. It's a funny. Uh, where the indeed is the orchestra? Eating sweet potato pie. <laughs> good job, everybody. Thanks for tuning in. I hope you learned how to order pizza. We did it. Hi, Bruno Mars.